Great. Well, good morning and welcome everyone to the Ottawa Hospital. Bonjour et bienvenue à l'Hôpital d'Ottawa. My name is Cameron Love and I'm the President and CEO here at the hospital. Before we begin, I want to start by recognizing the land we stand on here today. The Ottawa Hospital respectfully acknowledges it's located upon traditional and unceded Algonquin territory. We have the privilege and responsibility to serve First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, and to demonstrate respect for the contributions, culture, and traditional knowledge of all Indigenous people. I want to welcome our special guests who are here with us today. Minister of Long-Term Care, Paul Calandra, James Schlegel, President and CEO of Schlegel Villages, Dr. Michael Guerrero, President and CEO of Extendicare, Ryan Bell, CEO of Southbridge, and to our local MPPs who continue to be incredibly supportive of healthcare within this region. Today we're standing on the Ottawa Hospital Civic Campus, or as it's been known for many years, the Ottawa Civic Hospital. This hospital has a long legacy of supporting the people of Ottawa and of Eastern Ontario. Millions of people have come here for care over its history, and in fact, I know very few people who have never had to visit, whether their own health care or to spend time with a loved one. For 100 years, this has been where people come during their hardest times, for healing and for compassion. Thousands and thousands of babies have taken their first breaths upon our maternity ward, and the research done in this building has changed the practice of medicine and improved the lives of patients around the world. So I find it very fitting that with today's announcement, this civic campus will continue to contribute to the health and well-being of our community for years to come. With that, please allow me to introduce Minister Calandra. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cameron, and uh, and thank you uh, uh, all for uh, Ottawa Civic Hospital uh, campus for hosting us uh, today at uh, at this very very important event. I'd also like to uh, to thank uh, uh, Jamie Schlegel, President and CEO of Schlegel Villages, Dr. Michael Gruyere, as, uh, as uh, Cameron mentioned, uh, Extended Care, Ryan Bell, uh, Southbridge uh, CEO of Southbridge, uh, uh, Jane Tracklow, Dean of Faculty of Health, uh, Public Safety and Community Studies at Algonquin College for joining us. Uh, it is also very, very great to be here, of course, with my colleagues uh, Goldie Gamari, MPP for Carleton, and Jeremy Roberts, Roberts, MPP for Ottawa West Nepean, to announce that we are adding 1,280 new and upgraded long-term care beds in this region, which is absolutely spectacular news uh, for the great city of Ottawa. Now, because of today's allocation, we have reached and surpassed our goal to have 30,000 new long-term care beds in the development process in the province of Ontario. That's 30,000 new long-term care beds. Now this was always a very ambitious target, but through record provincial investments, close collaboration with our health partners, and innovative measures like the Accelerated Build Program and the Modernized Funding Model, we have delivered. Now to put this number into perspective, I've talked about this a lot. Uh, only 611 net new beds were built between 2011 and 2018. And again, we have 30,000 net new beds in the development pipeline. That's almost 50 times higher than the previous decade. These 30,000 new beds are being built in long-term care homes across the province, from Ottawa to Orangeville, Kenora to Windsor. And we've invested $6.4 billion to ensure that every one of these homes is comfortable, safe, and built to modern design standards. These are spaces where our loved ones can feel at home near their family and friends and in communities that they have helped build. Of the 30,000 beds announced to date, 115 projects have proposed to be part of a campus of care model which helps integrate the long-term care home into the broader healthcare system. Recognizing the diversity of our aging population, 30 projects have have proposed service, uh, uh, proposed to serve Indigenous communities, and 39 uh, are proposed to uh, serve the Francophone population. And with the redevelopment of older homes, the old system of three and four ward rooms is being eliminated. Now, like all of the homes in the development, in the development, the projects we're announcing today in Ottawa will be assets to the community. So we're allocating 1,280 beds to five Ottawa long-term care homes. Now this morning, I already announced 121 new and 71 upgraded beds would be uh, added to the Bruyere Long-Term Care Home. 
And, I'm, and now I'm happy to announce the other 1,088 beds, which will be added to long-term care in Ottawa. 256 redeveloped beds at Extended Care Ottawa and Nepean. 48 new and 272 redeveloped beds at Extended Care Ottawa in the West End. 320, 320 new beds at Schlegel Villages Ottawa at the Civic Hospital site and 192 new beds at Southbridge Ottawa with construction uh, uh, expected to begin uh, the winter of uh, 2022 and right through winter of 2027. The milestone we reach today is a critical part of our work to fix long-term care. Building more homes and beds is what Ontario has needed for decades. It will help reduce wait lists and address the growing demand for long-term care across the province. But we have talked about this a lot. There's no point in building new, upgraded facilities across the province of Ontario if you don't have the staff to fill those positions. And that's why we've committed $5 billion for, uh, uh, to increase staffing. Now that's an investment of $5 billion to add over 27,000 frontline staff so that we can reach our commitment of providing four hours of direct care per resident per day. This commitment, like our commitment to build 30,000 new beds, makes Ontario a leader in this country. Our government is also taking uh, action to protect residents through better enforcement, accountability, and transparency. We're investing $72 million over three years to double the number of inspectors in Ontario and to la launch the new Proactive Inspections Program. We are doing what needs to be done to fix long-term care so that residents can be supported now and into the future. We're building a long-term care system where every resident experiences the best quality of life supported by a safe, high quality of care. The main goal that the Premier set out back in 2018 was to ensure that, and we've heard this from residents' councils as we met with residents' councils, as we met with our, our partners, they said a couple of things to us. They said, look, you build facilities, but the people who live there, they consider that home and the long-term care system has to transition from a place that it's a facility and that respects that it is a place where people call home and that they build new dreams for many, many years to come, memories and dreams for years to come. And I also want to take an opportunity, if I can, uh, uh, to, uh, to really, uh, Cameron and all, all, all of our partners, uh, to absolutely thank your staff. What you have done and what they have done over the last two years is simply amazing. They have gone above and beyond the call of duty. They have worked harder than anybody could have ever imagined. And the entire province, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. I know you, uh, you hear it uh, a lot, but I wanted to very sincerely say thank you very much uh, and to express our thanks. And to my caucus colleagues, uh, uh, Jeremy and Goldie, uh, you know, it, it can be tough. I don't think I'm saying anything that you that, that catch anybody by surprise. It can be tough getting uh, uh, attention in Ottawa, you know, with uh, uh, federal parliament here and a, and a very uh, active uh, uh, municipal uh, uh, government. Uh, but these two, and Minister McLeod and Minister Fullerton, have never once let up on asking for and requiring more from the province for the people of Ottawa. They have never let up. There would be no announcements here today for long-term care. There would have not been the historic announcements that the Premier made a few weeks ago if it wasn't for these two members of Provincial Parliament along with their, their colleagues who are not here today. They are tenacious, they are passionate, they work extremely hard for the people of Ottawa and they help us who can sometimes get stuck in our little bubble in Toronto understand just how important Ottawa is to the province of Ontario. And I also want to say, uh, uh, Make another point. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people talk about long-term care and have, you know the importance of it. But let me just say this: we are building homes across this province, large communities, small communities, places that have never had long-term care before. We are building long-term care. And when we talk about the elimination of the three and four, the old-school ward systems, you know, when we were announcing a home in, in a part of northern Ontario, they said to us, "This is a huge. It's a massive difference for us." It is a brand new home, it's twice the size, but it means jobs and opportunity for our people. It means investment for our people. And one thing that people have to better understand, and I think Premier Ford has understood it, I know all of you have understand this, that when we go across, when we go across to other jurisdictions and we say make investments in the province of Ontario, 
They ask us, what is our climate like? What is our tax system like? What's red tape like? But then the very next question that they ask us is, what is your health care system like? What is your long-term care system like? What is your education system? Because if we're going to make investments in the province of Ontario, we want to know that the people who we will be hiring have access to the best schools, the best uh, hospitals, the best long-term care system. If they're going to make an investment in our community, they want to know that we are also making those investments in our community. Uh, so it is very, very exciting what is happening across the province of Ontario, not only in healthcare and long-term care, the jobs and opportunity it brings, the fact that we are transitioning homes from facilities to homes for people. It is groundbreaking, it is exciting to be part of it, and I'm gonna, before I close and, and, and hand it over to, to Jamie, I'm just going to brag a bit, if I can, uh, finally, just about the team at, uh, at long-term care who have done an absolutely spectacular job I get to be here to make announcements because I, I'm the minister, so I get to give you back the money that you sent to Queen's Park and to make the investments in your community. But the team of people that you never see, who never get to come up here, are the ones that actually made all of this happen in a very, very, very short period of time. Uh, and not just during a pandemic, but before a pandemic, during a pandemic, and for years to come. Great team at, uh, at long-term care. And three of them who are here who will get, who are just gonna be infuriated with me, uh, but I'm going to make them come forward because I think they do a spectacular job, but we never credit them at all. So Juliana, I, I know this, they, come on up. Juliana, Mick, Mick, and Vanessa, who's going to kill me. I think they, they represent my long-term care team. Uh, and all of those that can't be here today, thank you so very much. We would not be here today, we would not be making these investments in the province of Ontario if it wasn't for all of you and it wasn't for all of them who work day and night and never get thanks for it. So thank you all very much. Thank you for being here and thank you for everything that you have done. And I hope this puts an end to the phone calls, the talking, <laughs> the badgering, the beating up that I take. I can stop avoiding Jeremy and Goldie because now I feel that I can uh, make it into the legislature and not have one of the two of them waiting for me as I get out of my, uh, my car to walk into the building. So thank you very much. With that, I'll pass it over uh, to, you, uh, to you, Jamie. Thank you. Thanks, Minister Calandra, for those remarks, and and uh, and more importantly, for the uh, support from you and your caucus colleagues in the provincial government, uh, investing in the healthcare system that will lead to a higher quality of life and better care for our seniors who uh, are so deserving of that care and quality of life. We're we're super excited about. Um, uh, partnering with our colleagues and friends at uh, the Ottawa Hospital, Cameron and his team, in um, uh, reimagining this uh, iconic civic hospital site and redeveloping it to continue to serve the healthcare needs of, uh, of Ottawa, not necessarily with a maternity ward, like perhaps it did in the past, uh, now serving the needs of, of seniors and others um, in the community. And... Um, I'm so uh, pleased to be able to uh, offer different elements of uh, a project that I think will really serve the community well. We're gonna be building a, a campus of care, a continuum, as Minister Calandra mentioned, that will include not just long-term care, but assisted living, retirement living, memory care, and seniors' apartments, so we can support seniors as their care needs change over time, and we can meet the different needs that couples may have. We're going to build and develop a, a seniors health hub that will actually provide programs, services, care to support seniors living in the broader community so they can live longer and, and, uh, and well in their own homes uh, as, part of a, as part of an innovative and progressive health system. We're actually gonna be working with Ottawa Hospital to develop new ways of working together across the health system to provide seamless, smooth care for, for our older adults. We've learned, if we've learned anything from the pandemic, we've learned a lot, is that the, the different parts of the health system have to work better together. And uh, I think this partnership is an important step in that direction, de developing and offering new and innovative, integrated models of care between acute care, complex care, rehab care, and, and long-term care. So we're really excited about working with Cameron and the team at the Ottawa Hospital 
to really be a leader in the province of developing these new integrated models of care. And we're also very excited about working with partners like Algonquin College, and Minister Calandra mentioned the health human resource challenges that long-term care and in fact the entire health system in Ontario and around North America are experiencing. And so we're working with partners like Jane and her team at Algonquin College to build a living classroom right on site to train future healthcare workers right in the environment they're ultimately going to be working in uh, to provide a richer learning environment for them and also to allow our, our residents to participate in the teaching process uh, to further enhance that rich learning experience for our uh, future healthcare workers. So we're really pleased to be developing new models, innovating in terms of how we deliver care, innovating in terms of how we meet the future health human resource needs of, um, of this area of Ottawa and, and beyond. And, uh, and so honored to be uh, part of this civic hospital redevelopment. So Minister Calandra, thank you again for the honor of really being uh, part of the future of the Ottawa health system. And with that, I'll hand off to my colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Michael Greer from Extendicare. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, thanks for your, your remarks. Um, I'm really delighted to be here today for what for us is a very exciting announcement. For Extendicare, it gives us the opportunity to build on our decades-long relationship with this great city. In fact, our very first home uh, that we operate in Canada was opened in Ottawa in 1969. This announcement's a great day for us at Extended Care, for the people we care for in this community, for our dedicated team members who work every day to make a difference in the lives of our residents and their families. The two projects that the minister announced today bring to fore the number of new homes that we're building in the Ottawa area. Last October, we broke ground on a new state-of-the-art development in Stittsville that will be home to 256 residents when it opens late next year. We also received approval last year to build a second 192 bed home to replace beds uh, that are currently in our older Ottawa homes. Today's announcement by the Government of Ontario means Extendicare will build a third home with 256 bed beds and a fourth home with 320 beds. Construction is expected to complete in 2026. As has been mentioned, we'll be constructing these homes to state-of-the-art design standards to meet the current and future needs of seniors. They will offer more space to connect with loved ones, increase privacy with one resident per room, and a comfortable environment more conducive to resident quality of life than is possible in our five current homes. Enhanced resident activity areas and flexible space for restorative and palliative services will make a meaningful difference in the care that seniors receive in this community. Extended Care will invest approximately $200 million in the two projects that were announced today, bringing our total investment for our four new Ottawa homes to nearly $376 million. We are very, very grateful to Minister Calandra and the Government of Ontario for your historic support and investment in seniors' care. You've really stepped up to partner with the long-term care sector in a truly significant way, more so than we've seen from any other government. Replacing these old homes is long overdue. The fact is that modern homes built to today's standards are essential for our residents' care, comfort, safety, and well-being. This program to invest in new beds, to fund additional caregivers, and to increase accountability and transparency brings new hope to a sector that has struggled with increasing demands for decades, and in particular over the past two years, in navigating a global pandemic that has had a devastating impact on seniors worldwide. 
On behalf of our residents, their families, and our team members, thank you, Minister, for your commitment and your support. And finally, I do want to thank Cameron Love and his team at the Ottawa Hospital, who have been steadfast partners through the challenges of the pandemic. We look forward to continuing the partnership that we forged during very difficult times to build for a better future for seniors. We're excited to get moving on the two projects that we announced today, and we're proud to do our part in the renewal of the long-term care system in Ottawa. Extended Care has served seniors in the National Capital Region for more than 50 years, and with today's announcements, we're building for the next 50. So let's get going. So I'm really, uh, really happy to, uh, uh, to be able to uh, ask Ryan Bell, uh, another uh, long-term uh, uh, colleague and friend in the uh, long-term care sector to make his remarks. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Michael. <clears throat> so I would like to start by taking uh, this opportunity uh, to first thank uh, Minister Calandra and the Ministry of Long-Term Care for prioritizing and enhancing long-term care in Ontario. Southbridge is in the midst of several projects across the province, and we look forward to our continued partnership uh, with the ministry and other uh, community stakeholders within Ottawa as we move forward uh, with our new bed announcement today of 192 beds in the Ottawa region. Southbridge uh, employs over 3,000 staff across the province in our long-term care and retirement homes. And I first, you know, secondly, so I wanted to acknowledge and applaud their hard work tirelessly putting resident care and resident well-being first, especially during these last few challenging years. We are excited for residents to move into our new homes. We have four homes across the province opening this summer that we started construction on in December 2020, the closest to the Ottawa region uh, being in Kempville. These new facilities, including the one that we will build here in the Ottawa region, are focused on a resident-centered approach. They're modern, and they have a community-minded lifestyle in mind. Our new homes will also include more green space and built with the residents' uh, ability to make friendships more easily, to have staffs be more consistent amongst our floors, and to also have strengthened infection prevention and control measures. Our projects will also allow us to further enhance the quality of life for our residents and give families and essential caregivers the opportunity to support residents as they live their life to the fullest. Southbridge is proud to be part of the future of long-term care in Ontario, and we look forward to opening the new home in the Ottawa region very shortly. From that, I'd like to now turn the mic back over to Minister Calandra for more remarks. Uh, thank you. I think we can take questions if there are if there are any questions. We'll turn to the media for questions now. There being no questions, this concludes the media Q&A. Great. Thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate it.